I have been reflecting a lot on the last couple of years since I moved to Sweden. I knew moving here was going to change me completely, but I also knew that I wouldn't be able to know just how much it would change me. Or maybe it's that coming here would finally show me a path back to my true self after about a decade of trying to prove my worth out in the world. Maybe Sweden didn't change me, but showed me where I was leaving myself behind in order to fit in in order to live up to some idea of who I needed to be. And I've also noticed this week as the sun has finally returned to Sweden that I haven't been particularly nice to myself through the last few months. While feeling sick and needing to work more slowly on projects and ideas, I often felt stuck in the same routine, unable to let myself have much needed breaks or simply to do something unexpected in the day. And so I took myself on a few long walks through unknown neighborhoods and just tuned into myself, listened to the places that are needing guidance and support, sat with my uncertainties and doubts a little bit more, made some space for the natural questioning that arises in seasons of deep change. The theme of doubt has come up many times in my immigration journey. Have I always made all the right decisions? How will I know it will all come out right in the end? And I have noticed how much I will torture myself with the unknown quality of it all without taking the time to really notice that I'm already here, in the process. There's no need to judge this process so harshly. Looking back on this time, I will most likely find that I spent so much time judging my not knowing and my doubts when I was actually being carried by my own discerning process the whole time. Doubt is natural, but so is finding little moments of certainty in each day. Hello, my beautiful friends, my fellow space blobs, earth blobs, sparkly blobs. And if you don't happen to be a blob, you can be any form you want to be like truly have fun with it. That is what it's all about. Why are we so concerned about trying to fit into the formula of anybody else? We don't have to, we don't need to, especially in this space. And you all, this has been, it was such an intense eclipse season, Aries season, winter for me. And I feel like as I'm sitting here kind of preparing for May and feeling through Taurus season, first of all, I feel a huge exhale. I'm just like, because I was like under the weather in so many different ways for many, many weeks. I'm finally kind of coming out of that. The sun finally came out today here in Sweden, which we have all been waiting for up here in the northern climes. It has been a very cold, gray spring so far. So I'm just feeling a lot of hope and openness as this energy starts to kind of change. And it also got me thinking about intuition, which is one of my favorite topics to deep dive on and really sit with a little bit because it's a topic that has just so many layers. It's like an onion. You could just keep unfolding and unpeeling the layers for ages and find new levels to it. That term intuition itself is just so huge and can encapsulate so many different things. And it's been getting me thinking about this idea of doubt and intuition and how interlinked they are and how natural it is to have doubt as an intuitive person. And I think sometimes it feels like we're not allowed to say that. Like, if you're an intuitive person, you should always just kind of feel good. You should just be able to move with the flows of life and know it's all going to be great and know it's all going to work out. And if you don't have that, then maybe you're not an intuitive person, or maybe you don't have it figured out, or maybe you're confused. And I would like to put this out there in our chat today as we explore these themes that maybe it's possible to be a highly intuitive, sensitive person who often will make movements in life that are very much tapped into something really true and profound. And you can be having simultaneous seasons of doubt, moments of doubt, uncertainty, fog, mystery, non-action that 
are happening in your life and that these two things can coexist. And in fact, they often do. And it's funny to me because it really does feel like something we're not allowed to say. Like we have to pursue this vision of intuitive living that just doesn't include any of the shadow, any of the mystery of intuitive life, because it inherently life is just keeps offering up waves of like, what do I do with this? And the more that we can create space for that to exist, I think the more actually we can live truly intuitive lives that are multifaceted and involve lots of different elements. So I want to explore this a little bit today. Uh, Grab your tea, your journal, uh, whatever you like to do to hang out with me and do a little bit of a deep dive. We're just going to explore this, make some space for some nuance and conversations around intuition. And I think this will be a really great conversation as we tap into Taurus season, as we go through what I think of as a very foundationally important season of nourishment and coming back home and kind of thinking about what we really want to create and expand out in the world. So let's get into it. I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been living in Sweden for almost two and a half years at this point. And ever since I moved here, I have had huge waves of doubt. And I think partially that's because I am living in such unknown territory all the time. So I am constantly uncertain of like what that's going to look like, how that's going to play out. And I think it's a really natural part of that. I think it's also just been this really interesting exploration for me of huge life decisions, because I still feel very attached to the Southwest of the U S it's a very important place for me. It's a place I hope to return to at some point in the future, but I also feel very connected to this journey that I've been on. And there's this kind of duality that I've been experiencing since moving to Sweden, where I have longings that are running parallel to each other. And how do I work with those? How do I find the right answer for how to live through those things? So I've had a lot of big seasons of doubt. And I think it's important to just note this because I think you could look at somebody like me. I think it'd be very easy to look at somebody like me and say like, she knows where she's living. She's got everything sorted out. She has followed her intuition and it's magically worked out. But I think that's, you know, often how we'll perceive people who seem connected to themselves, even though they really probably most likely are having huge waves of doubt and uncertainty and these kind of forks in the road in their lives where they have to make big decisions that maybe they don't fully know how it's going to look or play out. And, you know, the more I look back through my life, seasons of doubt have played such a pivotal role and a natural role in huge life choices I've made in seasons where I really didn't know how things were going to play out. And the more I've thought about it, the more I've realized like, wow, I should just really start to incorporate knowing that like doubt and uncertainty are going to join me anytime I'm growing, anytime I'm changing. I think doubt also comes in really naturally throughout life for a variety of reasons, including, you know, when we have maybe a serious chronic illness or illness in the family that makes us feel a little bit disconnected from the divine that can happen. Doubt can come in when maybe we're needing something deeper than just affirmations and like the happy go lucky positivity where we're needing to look a little bit deeper. So many religious traditions and spiritual traditions talk about the kind of central role of doubt in negotiating and working with our connectedness in life. And I think doubt can also come in because it's natural to feel a range of emotions. Now I want to just make a little distinction here right at the beginning of our chat, because I think it's important, which is that doubt can play many different roles, including that doubt can be just intuition working, right? Like doubt can also just be one of those things where when we feel a little doubt that we want to go on that date or say yes to that job, that it could very well be that internal guidance system saying this does not feel right. You know, it feels a little icky. It feels off. And I think part of our journey here and just part of this exploring, and I don't have an answer for this because each of us is going to be so unique with our relationship to intuition and to seasons of mystery. But I do think part of the journey of life, and we're always kind of exploring this is differentiating between when something, when the doubt is something that's just your intuition saying, Hey, this doesn't feel right. 
And when doubt is a natural part of being in uncharted territory, working with what I call the unimaginable horizon, when we really can't fully see because we're following a path that nobody's cut before us, nobody's shown us the way. And that I think when we make space for the fact that doubt will probably be there when we're growing and changing, we feel a lot more support, actually, rather than trying to have this unrealistic expectation of just feeling certain all the way through when we're doing new things, that if we know doubt is going to be there, if we know fog is going to be there, if we know we're going to have to take rests and sit back and maybe take non-action, that that's okay. So if we accept that doubt can be an element of stepping into uncharted territory, being on a path that nobody has moved through before for us and we're kind of figuring out as we go I think then doubt kind of turns into a different experience which is one of maybe being in the mystery and also maybe we need to listen to times where we need to take breaks or we need to take rests in between all of that growth it can also just mean that we really don't know how something is going to work out and it made me think of a quote from a writing from Reina Maria Rilke, the poet and writer, who said in one of his writings, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers, which cannot be given to you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. And I, that's where I think I'm going with this whole element of doubt can be a part of this kind of question seeking, this question asking, answer seeking energy that we can sometimes have. And we're in seasons where it's like, what's going to happen? How do I deal with this? What do I say? What do I do? Do I move? Do I say yes? Do I say no? That sometimes we just really need the process. Sometimes when we're in seasons of doubt, it's because we really need that full process. We need the time. We need to gather the information. We need to look around. We need to notice ourselves. We need to notice what's working, what's not. We need to go through the process of having some conversations and doing some trial and error things. And that sometimes when that's what's needed, doubt can feel kind of like we're judging ourselves for needing to collect that evidence. So I just want to throw that out there as one part of it. Once again, of course, doubt can be an intuitive tool that is telling us this isn't right for me. Once again, this is part of our exploration today. But within that, if we're thinking about this as being if you are in a season of doubt, or you've just been living life, like kind of not knowing, like, am I really following where I want to be going? Or am I not? Or am I just confused? One of the ways that I think actually can really help yourself figure out what this season of mystery or doubt or uncertainty is doing with you is to start expanding your sense of safety in these spaces. And one of the ways that I do that is by stripping back, like asking much smaller questions, like very mundane, very simple questions of myself. Sometimes when I feel very overwhelmed by doubt, trying to figure out which path to take, do I go back to the US and take care of my older family members who I miss a lot? Do I stay here and keep deepening this relationship to this place? What's right for me? I realize that I'm asking way, way too big of a question for the day that I'm in. And because I'm asking this huge question that there's no way I could get a conclusive answer of on this day, because I can tell in my body that's just way overwhelming. I just bring it back to simpler questions. What do I need today? Who do I want to talk to today? Maybe I need to talk to a friend. Maybe I need to just sit down and have a meal and put on a warmer sweater because it's a little chilly and just take a breath. Do I need to do something that kind of makes me feel connected to my soul, like paint or knit? Do I need to, maybe I want to get a little bit of a project done. So I think it's really good to just bring it back. A lot of times doubt feels overwhelming when we're just asking too big of a question. Also, I would say that when we're thinking about doubt and intuition, intuition also just works on the most mundane level. And a lot of times we're trained out of listening to this part of ourselves, this intuitive part that allows us to know and sense and feel things. 
So paying attention to the smallest nudges of information, you know, just tiny nudges about how to, which email to answer first, you know, if you're at work or, you know, what shoes are going to feel the best for you in walking today. Listening to each of those little nudges can help us to expand a sense of safety when we're in seasons of mystery, uncertainty, or fog on the much, much larger questions of meaning, purpose, life path choices, all of that. And this can really actually help us get out of some of that kind of inflamed, stressful feeling around the fact that we're in a season of doubt or that we are feeling doubts about our life choices. And I think it's really important that we try and destigmatize doubt and destigmatize ourselves, take some of the judgment and the sting out of what we're feeling when we don't know those giant conclusive answers quite yet. And this kind of brings me to the final thing that I was thinking about on this gigantic topic that I could probably talk about for truly three or four hours. It would be so fun to sit in a group and just chat with you all about it. But it just kind of brings me full circle back to the beginning of our chat and saying that, you know, I think it's important that we're allowed to redefine intuition to include so many more lenses. You know, I mentioned at the beginning, this whole like idealistic view, simplistic view of intuition is just being, you know, you just in alignment and you just feel good and you just follow that. I think that's one modality of it. It's a totally valid modality. It's a very great one. It's fun when it's there. It's definitely a fun modality to move life through. It's a valid desire to want to expand that more in our lives. But I I just think like intuition works on so many different levels. It works in the seasons when we don't know what to do. It works in the seasons when we're feeling tired. It, it is something that can show itself to us through deep questioning, through feeling disconnected from spirit. It can work on all of these different levels, including seasons of mystery, doubt, fog, inaction, uncertainty. And I think that's so empowering for those of us who consider ourselves intuitive people and are experiencing big life questions. Because the longer you live, I think I'm learning this more and more every day, the more likely it is that you are going to encounter kind of unanswerable questions in like a nice, tidy, aha, here's the answer way. You're going to be living questions and seasons of life that just require the process. And that's going to bring in waves of doubt. And it just makes me think too, like doubt is kind of an umbrella term for a lot of subtler emotions and feelings. And I think doubt can slowly evolve into a couple different things. On the one hand, it can be an element that turns into knowing. I know that I need to change this. I know this isn't right for me. I know the choice I need to make because this doubt has grown into a knowing. I think that can very well happen over time. Doubt can also resolve into other feelings. You know, I've had moments of doubt and overwhelm since moving to Sweden and where I just, cause I was feeling overwhelmed by the amount of change by how I was changing. And then as I moved through the process, it became, wow, I just learned so many new things and I'm now stretching and growing in this different way. And I just needed to take care of myself through those seasons and make sure that I was caring for my physical self, accepting that I just have to rest a lot between each of these steps and that I'm just a little overwhelmed at times. So it's interesting. I think that, you know, ending this conversation here, mostly I'm just inviting a conversation around, you know, like what, what do you feel like the connection between intuition and seasons of like uncertainty or doubt are? Um, What do you notice the interplay between these different ways of seeing and feeling are? How have you noticed you feel like allowed or disallowed to utilize the information that shows up when you feel uncertain or in doubt? Or having harder feelings, you know, do we feel like there's this dichotomy and we have to follow one way of intuition or another? And, you know, just what's coming up when you think about your own kind of geography and archaeology of yourself when it comes to how intuition shows up for you, I'd be really curious to hear. And if you did want more support on just this topic of intuition, I did a whole series last year uh, called Reclaiming Intuition that was all about just kind of getting us back in touch with it. And also I deep dive a little bit on the different lenses of intuition that go so much further than just the kind of typical intuitive 
framework that I think we often just see in movies and TVs and just the expectation of what intuition is supposed to look and feel like. So if you're looking for a little bit of a guidance or just like a deepening or a place to exhale, I would really recommend that it's available to watch all of the sessions right now on my Patreon for any paid members. And I'm also doing Journey Through the Major Arcana right now, which is also really intuitive because we're unlocking archetypes that you can really work with. They're kind of like these archetypes of different aspects of the intuitive journey and coming home to ourselves. And I've been really loving going through all of those major arcana cards, all 22. So we are quite a way through the journey, but the all of the sessions are available to watch so far. So you could binge watch all of those. I'm doing really nourishing journaling practices with those and physical practices with those. So if you're interested in that, I'd love to see you over on my Patreon. I offer so much support there. And we also have twice a month gatherings on Zoom for my Magic Makers tier, where we just talk about life. We talk about the ways that we're moving through things, the tools we're using, what that's meaning for us. So I'd love to have you in that space as well, if you're interested in joining I'd love to see you there. You can find me on Instagram. I haven't been posting there as much because I have not felt as inspired, but you know, I sometimes do write some thoughtful things on there. Um, you can also find me here. Let me know how you're feeling in this season, how you're feeling moving into Taurus season. And I will see you all for a, a ne our next chat very, very soon. I hope you have a beautiful moment, day, night, week, wherever you are in any moment that you are in. And I will see you all so very soon. Mm -hmm.